Hello, everyone. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, well, uh, machines have evolved in a way that they can interact with us and uh, our physical environment. We have been observers of the first big machines able to perform basic things like some arithmetics and logic to nowadays a bunch of devices that can not only take pictures and record audio, but uh, capture really like many aspects of our reality. Um, and of course, there are more sophisticated tools that they are used in science in many different fields. My field is uh, computational mechanics. So in computational mechanics, we basically try to predict the deformations and forces occurring inside of bodies uh, using some uh, representations of them. Um, now, these representations are made out of uh, many components, and uh, due to the large number of them, we have many equations to solve, and then the use of computers become necessary. Contact mechanics is a sub-branch of it, and uh, here, as you can imagine, things can become more complicated since we have uh, different components from different bodies uh, interacting. And um, even sometimes making a whole uh, mechanical simulation with contact can uh, um, might require to adjust a series of parameters so that it, it actually works and sometimes things get, can get uh, very tricky. Okay, so let's imagine the following scenarios. We need to explore a dark space, could be on this planet or in a different one. Could be a gas pipe or an ar a human artery in our body. Or we could imagine also a case where we need to um, detect how hard or soft or smooth or a, a material is in places where we are not actually supposed to be. So the main motivation of my doctoral thesis is to provide deformable solids with the sense of touch. As a first part of the project, we go with the mechanical simulations. Um, as I mentioned earlier, like solids are represented with small, tiny elements, which are the famous uh, finite elements. We configure the physical properties into these elements to, so that they can represent in a global scale the, the actual deformations of the solids. And due to the discrete nature of these elements, though, in the contact part, we can get some um, very irregular responses of contact. That's why we uh, apply some smoothing techniques using some mathematical uh, formulations. And then the contact part, contact detection part, is uh, aiming to limit the number of possibilities of contact. And uh, with all this, we can now uh, compute like the physical aspects of contacts, like the contact forces. With all this, we can build our first uh, models. We can obtain some results like this, like this. Yeah. So the problem is uh, to get more complex uh, models, we need uh, typically some hours or even days of computation. So in order to accelerate this, uh, the second part of the project will be to build a surrogate model which is basically take some features of these classic uh, mechanical simulations and fit them into a computer. And so to teach the computer to produce way faster simulations using machine learning uh, tools so that we can have results in matters of seconds or even real time uh, simulations. And this uh, represents a bit uh, what, what this uh, does. Um, so we will have a big number of results and uh, this is something that has to be used to um, build a probabilistic identification framework, which is the third part of the, the of the thesis, uh, the sense of touch part, let's say. And um, so we can imagine the following scenario. We have a deformable body in, a, in an environment. This environment can be either a room or a box this deformable body could be a balloon. We could have one point in, on the balloon surface and uh, after inflating it, we could see something like this and observe the trajectory of that point. We could actually see more than one point. We could have a collection of trajectories or we might as well just focus on the trajectories and out of it, try to predict uh, what the environment is. Let's say it's geometry or it's shape. 
And one step further, we could apply this technique to deformable uh, I don't know what to do anymore. We could apply this technique to the formable environment <laughs> so that we can predict the, how stiff they are or how smooth the, the walls of the environment are. Um, and then <laughs> and then we could get a little bit more optimistic and even try to predict things inside of the solids like cavities or some uh, solids objects inside of the, the formable bodies that shouldn't be there. This technique could then, yeah, like that. And then this technique could be applied, for example, to the human body to find the things that shouldn't be there or to find things in the surroundings in this planet or even beyond. And uh, as the poet uh, Emily Dickinson said, one step at a time, uh, it's all you need to get there. Thank you.